Hello, this is TV Girl from Voice of TV, reviewing Boardwalk Empire's latest episode, Season 3, Episode 3, Bone Fortuna. You are probably thinking before you saw it, what the hell does that imply? That's what I was thinking too. Well, now that we know, it's pretty funny. Kind of sums up the whole episode in a way too. Anyway, first of all, I loved this episode. It felt so genuine, so real to me, and I could empathize with all the characters, and it felt so much less empty than last episode. Probably partially because Richard and Jillian and Van Alden were back, and Terrace Winters, if you kill off Richard Harrow, I don't know if I could ever forgive you. So the first thing I thought in the opening scene with Nucky having a symbolic dream was, number one, this is a first for Boardwalk. They never had a dream sequence before. Number two, this is very Sopranos-esque. And it doesn't hurt that Steve Buscemi's character in The Sopranos was in Tony Soprano's dreams. And number three, very artfully and skillfully done. This is what I love about great television. Someone's death is not always highly dramatized or shoved in your face in real life. People go on, especially in the criminal world. But that doesn't mean the person never existed. And instead of shoving their death in your face to make you feel <coughs> sons of anarchy, good television will have the dead character still linger, but in other ways. They'll come back in dreams, or you can just see it through the characters that were related to the dead. Even if they don't come out and say it or cry it out, the expressions on their faces, their actions, their mannerisms, and in this case it was Jimmy, and dreams are a very difficult thing to do while on television. And when it's bad, it is bad. It looks like a cheap way to tell us how the character feels. It needs to be subtle. And Boardwalk did just that. This episode managed to bring back Jimmy to us successfully and not in a forceful tone. Did we ever expect Terrace Winters to have a scene with everyone sitting around crying over Jimmy? Of course not. The writers of the show are amazing and don't need to run with cliches to get people feeling. Very well done. I think it was also probably satisfying to many viewers that there was at least some sort of closure to Jimmy's death in this episode, or actually I would say a tribute, not closure. I'm not sure if there will ever be such a thing as that in this series, but Jimmy's still there. And speaking of Jimmy, I loved having Richard back. I love Richard. Have I told you how much I love Richard? And there's nothing funnier watching him scare the hell out of Mickey Doyle with his pants down. It's also interesting how I consider Jimmy's death just part of being a soldier, and that's why he has no animosity towards Nucky. I'm, I'm taking that as truth. Yet, he killed Manny because of what he did to Angela. Wow, I got a serious chill down my spine when Nucky found out how many men Richard killed, and when Nucky asked him if he ever thought about any of them, Richard just said something like, I think you already know the answer yourself, and, and walked out. That really got to me. And since this is really the first episode we have ever seen Nucky struggle with some sort of guilt, it fit really well. Nucky seeing the little boy with the blood on his face at the altar, the memories back to season one. But bluntly, Nucky can't handle what he did. His psyche can't. I also like how Nucky is taking his anxiety and using Billy Kent to try to find solace so he feels less lonely. But she doesn't have what he wants. She's a young, free girl. And Nucky doesn't even love her. It's just his way of coping at the moment. But Steve Buscemi is really an incredible actor and knocked this episode out of the park. And Jack Houston, of course, Richard, but I love him. Ah, uh, Jip Rossetti, what a charmer. Wow, Bobby Cannavale is another fabulous actor. The most recent thing I saw him in before this was Nurse Jackie. He was in the last season of it. And uh, this is a very different role for him, much better one. And he's scary and complex. Scary, unpredictable, and he's like a big baby. You never know what's going to set him off. And Nucky has to treat him like a little kid. And even when he hands him a bone with the shipment, no pun intended, Jip is just so irked by this bone fortuna note, which is obviously supposed to mean born fortuna in Italian, good luck. But he feels like Nucky is mocking him and he can't let it go. And then when the sheriff of Tabor Heights says good luck, even though the sheriff has no clue that the saying is what's troubling Jip at the moment, it causes him to be lit on fire alive. 
by Jip. Jip's just a loose cannon, and the fallout from this will be tremendous. We thought it would be this episode, the fallout, but I think things are going to change for real this time. He's not going to get away with that. But Jip is becoming one of my favorite characters very quickly. I hope he stays, stays around for a while. Very interesting. As far as Margaret's storyline, it's so separate from everyone else's at the moment, so we get a real chance to decide now if she can stand on her own as a character. I like the character Margaret, but I don't like Margaret, if that makes sense. Well, it does. I find her realistic and well-developed, but I don't like her. And I don't think we're supposed to. But Margaret is very determined. She is manipulative, as clearly shown this episode. She finally got her way with the women's clinic. It's interesting to see this part of history, although alone at the moment, Margaret is one of the least interesting storylines. I do look forward to seeing her move past this and see how she deals with her other issues, which she has plenty of. <sighs> Van Alden or George. Van Alden, you need like six shots of bourbon and a few Xanax. Whoa, no, wait, that would kill you. But you need to chill, obviously. You don't need to hear that from me. But just when he's getting ready to maybe let loose a little bit, I mean, hey, his co-workers got him to go to a speakeasy. Van Alden out drinking? And then they get busted. What a buzzkill. I think Van Alden is just going to snap any minute. Dino Banyan, where are you? Someone help get this stick out of Van Alden's butt. But really, Michael Shannon's deadpan and over-serious portrayal of Van Alden is just perfection. Another fabulous actor. And like I said last episode, and I'll repeat it again, I think the show, after a long time, maybe 16 episodes, finally found its place. And it's only gone uphill from there. Storylines are interweaving beautifully. The symbolism is haunting, meaningful, and skillful. And the acting is just nothing short of superb. I haven't seen one bad actor on this show yet. So, for some predictions and thoughts. We were missing some characters this week, but there's just so many, you can't see them all in one episode. Or they would have to start killing people off. No Chalky, very little Eli, if you even want to count that. Al Capone wasn't there, Rothstein. And I'm sure I'm missing others, but the preview for next week, although a little vague, shows Rothstein and a big emphasis on Al Capone. I really thought Jip and Jillian were going to hook up. Is it just me, or would they be kind of a cool couple? Maybe I'm just weird. I think they'd look it together, that's for sure. Plus, they both have some animosity towards Nucky Thompson. Okay, a lot of animosity. Is it the last we'll see of these two together? They could be a real power couple. Also, it was interesting how Jillian mentioned Eli trying to kill Nucky to Jip. Do you think Jip will do anything with this bit of information? But more importantly, what will be the fallout from his insane act at Tabor Heights? I'm still really excited over this episode. I've rewatched it twice already, and it definitely gets an A from me. To me, this show is officially in my head in the ranks of shows like The Sopranos and The Wire. Nothing will beat my baby, The Sopranos, but I am very grateful for the show now. And patience has really paid off. Well, I'd also really like to hear your opinions, so please feel free to leave comments, opinions, predictions, and also check out my other Voice of TV reviews on Sons of Anarchy, Revolution, Homeland, Dexter, and more. Until next week, TV Girl from Voice of TV out.